All right, six o'clock, we call the meeting to order. We will dispense with the Pledge of Allegiance unless there's any objection. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda, please? I move to approve the agenda. I second the motion. Do we have a first and a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. That's the agenda. All right. Old business. Do we want to take this right in order? Or is Kurt online for something? He is, but we'll be fine because I think we don't have a whole lot for A and B anyway. No? No, unless we I can dispense with them about B. But okay. Unless I that's this. this. Yep. So you want me to start on A? Yep, that's fine. Okay. Um, just a real quick update. Spoke to Stephen Rose this morning. Um, we're in the bidding process right now for the liquor store. There are two construction companies that uh, came to the bid meeting. Um, bids are going to open at 2 o'clock on April 1st. Those uh, companies are TNT Construction out of Grand Rapids and Carl Sanderson. Um, that's where we're at right now. Um, as for the public works and the police facility, uh, there's some final architectural uh, drawings and specifications that Steve has to get to Angela Bakavoy for USDA to review. And he should have that done by the end of this week. And then it's in the hands of the USDA architect to review before they'll release it for, um, for loan processing. So that we have no idea what the timeline is on that. I have nothing else other than that, unless Mike has anything. Nope. No, no, no. Sandra, do you have anything to add? Do you guys have any questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm done then. You're done. <laughs> On to B. The hot water. You guys got a couple of aerial pictures here. Just a quick update for you. Um, the rear picture in the packet is what was proposed to me by Bruce. Uh, we talked briefly about it. Um, I don't believe that that's really a good spot for it, being that we don't own the road all the way through. I think people are going to pull out of there on that property. So if you flip back to the front page, that's just kind of the initial spot of where I'm thinking the best spot is going to be. We can kind of do a little drop in right there so we can pull off of the main main route through the, the park there. And so that's going to be just to substitute out of the power edge. You can see there's two light poles there. Not knowing exactly when that line was put in, whether or not I really want to put asphalt over the top of them. Just a few other little things. So that's just a quick update of where I'm at with that right now. Questions on that at all? Yeah, because the second picture, it, it goes to that little grain field, that creek right in the back. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't have been very suitable back there at all. Well, if it would have went to that, that's, I mean, that's our storm runoff right there that eventually runs out to the ditch. The, the real problem there was the road issue of it does go back out to Maine over here, but we don't own it all the way through. And it's just it's a really long roundabout so it would just they just say we don't own it all the way through and we shouldn't mm -hmm. leave anything to go through there on what is kind of our behalf by the park but looking in between them fence pole or the light poles here that's just an easy access yeah you just make it pull out pull back in i think there's 150 feet or so between the two light poles right. if i remember right so there should be plenty of room to drop off to the side and then as you're looking at that picture, I realize some of it's cut off, but towards the bottom, you can kind of see a, a brown little finger coming up in the, the green grass there. Mm -hmm. That's actually a, a drainage that goes to that ditch too. So the water that's being used can be piped over to the drainage ditch and sent out that way so that we're not having any ponding or anything sitting in the, the park there. To where, like in the future, nothing drains off into the lake, you know? Right. right. 
we do a little bit of reconstruction on that road and block off that road, would that be a better spot for it? With the first diagram? No, because we don't own half here. Is there any way that we could like knock off the road, like right here, just have like a turnaround spot for the boats and campers and RVs or whatever? We could definitely knock the road out. Just the problem is with where that light is and where that other, we'll just we'll say the sidewalk there, you can see where the sidewalk ends. Mm -hmm. It's kind of deceiving. It's not as much space as you think it is. And I think, you know, with a, a crew cab, short box or long box with a, a boat that's decent size, it might get pretty tight in there. All right. It's a possibility that we can <coughs> definitely still look at. We don't have to, we're not required to have a second exit on that, are we? If you're telling me we can have wire prayer or. On the park itself? Yeah. No, uh, it's. That's a good question. That's the only question. <coughs> there, there, there's no requirement on having a second exit that I know of. My understanding is it, it got put in some years ago with. I don't know how it got there. Yeah. <laughs> it's been there a while and it just, the snowmobile league club uses it or the trail system uses it now. Which is just fine. It's just in the springtime and in the fall and of course when it's wet it's really turns it kind of nasty and we got a lot of people that put mm -hmm. cut through on it. Yeah so the other part of it is the lessee. Yes. The property ownership I mean. Okay. Any other questions? No. I'll let you guys know more as I know more. Well, hey, this is a quick start. Onward. Good to hear back from them. What's that? It's good to hear back from them. Yeah, it's just, you know, I've been busy, he's been busy, and then just kind of go back and forth when we can. All right, we'll take those texts. I will turn it over to Kurt. Good evening, guys. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to touch a little bit on um, your pursuit of local sales tax. Um, the City of International Falls pursued this um, just recently, and we helped them out with a community education uh, program. Really, there's two components, and I think uh, um, Christina gave you a copy of a PowerPoint we used as part of that that educational campaign, but there are two components to look at. Number one is to show the public the need, the infrastructure need, and um, you're doing that through CIP work and your PER work. So that information is fairly detailed, fairly easy to lay out um, to basically show the, the citizens that there isn't just some wish list that the city council has, um, that there's infrastructure improvements that need to be done and that this um, sales tax will help accomplish that. Uh, the other component is to show that this is one way for a city to get dollars from outside the community to help uh, fund improvements that people from outside the community utilize, like your streets. Um, the city of International Falls, obviously, it's a lot bigger city it's got um i think we put together maybe 80 million dollars worth of of infrastructure things that they need to do um but they also uh spent the money uh on a, a market study that could really show what dollars uh, are coming from outside the immediate community um you guys won't have that market study and it's not worth you guys investing the money for that um so in that component it's going to just be more um, anecdotal evidence. Um, obviously, the uh, out of sound traffic that goes through your grocery store and liquor store and, and timber line. Um, so we can detail that, but uh, we can't exactly put a percent on it. Say, you know, 40% of the sales tax is going to be paid outside of the community. Um, so those are kind of the two components. Um, one of the issues that we'll have through this process is with COVID precautions still going on. One of the things that the city of International Falls did is 
Um, they did mailings, but then they also had a, a, a couple of public meetings for people to come and ask questions, um, a presentation to kind of show these two items that we're talking about. Um, that's not gonna be as easy this summer. Um, not sure how many people will feel comfortable to attend, um, and I discussed with Christina as we move forward and get a better feel for what this summer is going to be like. Maybe it makes more sense to tape a presentation with this information and just put it um, on your website so that people can walk, watch it at their leisure, send out notices reminding people that it's there. Um, maybe once when you post it, maybe once as we get closer to, to that election time. Um, so that's going to be a feeling out process. So really, the kind of scale that we're talking about is going to be much smaller than what International Falls did um, as far as the information to provide, um, but it's still important for people in those communities to understand the, the reason, the need that we, that we are looking for this, and also um, it's a way to bring dollars from outside of the community to pay for infrastructure that they actually utilize as they come through. So. Um, what, what questions do you have for me? Again, we're kind of at the beginning of this, just trying to formulate. And one of the reasons we gave you the PowerPoint is to kind of look through it and see what kind of things do you like, what kind of things don't you think we need to show them, and then maybe some stuff that's not in there that you said think would be maybe great to, to share with the community. So, My first concern was that we would have, we, won't, we aren't going to be able to show them, uh, you know, give them an estimate as to what percentage Sure. Since we're not doing that, if we don't do that study, then mm -hmm. we don't honestly have a number to, you know, to pitch. Yeah. And, the, and obviously that was a big part of International Falls presentation is that they said, you know, this is the kind of gen dollars from outside the community we're talking about being able to generate. And it's basically we're replacing either property taxes that we would tax the, the city for, or city citizens for to fill that gap or changes in sewer and water rates to fill that gap. So, you know, it could be very empirical, the, you know, the presentation that you provide. And that's just not probably going to be feasible for, for the city. done for International Falls on page 10 was that they they took a different perspective on what the ballot question would look like compared to what our city went through in 2018 it didn't really transpire to you know a normal versus the general public's understanding of what that referendum had to be and it, potentially things have changed since the legislature has changed the rules. But if you note on page 10, the question is a lot more simpler for the general public to understand. And I think that that in itself would help if we can market some type of, um, I don't know, like presentation or town hall or something else that with us could potentially help us pull all the information together so that a normal person, everyday person that's voting has a better understanding of what this money is going to go to. So that's how we can word it now? Or we're not sure? Well, this was their 2018 ballot question. And it, if I understand right, it failed in 2018, but it passed in 2020. Is that right, Kurt? Yeah, that's correct. So they went and through the same. We, they really changed the question. Um, they just did this public outreach, which they didn't really do um, in 2018. Right. So back then, it probably wouldn't have mattered. It, it was really the outreach that changed people's perspective and the voters to being able to push it through in the general election this past fall. Of course, Kurt, this presentation really doesn't give a backstory in 2018 when the voters voted it down. Do you know if the city of International Falls did anything to campaign for it back then and that's why it failed? 
um, they didn't involve us in the, in that campaign. There was some stuff kind of driven by the chamber a little bit, but it was pretty minimal. Um, and it was definitely missing the component of uh, really laying out all the projects that, that the city was facing and needing to do. Um, so it was more general, you know, we know we have a lot of infrastructure work to do and this is going to help pay for it. But that was kind of where it was left. So ultimately the reason I brought this to the board is, you know, we have to show regional, regional, regional significance. And that's one of the reasons which have got involved in the international falls presentation. That's a component we have to have for um, the referendum to get on the ballot. And that's, that's a portion where I don't have um, the back to do. But in addition to that, it's a way for us to push it through a little bit further. And I wanted to get some feedback from the board if this is the path we wanna take, or is it more door knocking and getting to, getting to tell everybody what that half percent sales tax will give us. It's gonna be both. You think it's gonna be both? Mm-hmm, because how do you even look at the citizens' output, input? And how that question has to be worded according to the right. city. I mean, if it's nice and pretty, like what they got to do there, mm -hmm. uh, that would be great. You know, how many people come in and say their water bill is a person? Uh, it's a lot less now. A lot less? Yeah. COVID, COVID, is, COVID has lowered our foot steps in, in the building considerably in the last year or two. I was hoping at least put a plan put together and just send it to them because they say the water bill is kind of updated them that way as well. And, the, doing the door and that's, a, that's a great suggestion, but one of the other problems that, has, that COVID has created is that we, we offer a direct pay right out of people's uh, bank accounts. And since COVID has happened and the turnover we've had with some of our utility customers, more people are taking advantage of that. <clears throat> Despite the fact that as you know, the city, we still send that postcard out. If we put something on the back of that postcard, everybody knows that it's just gonna come right out of their accounts on the first. So a lot of people don't even look at it. Mm -hmm. They might just file it away. So, and then we have the component where people come and they, they actually phone us and we take their card and we, charge it over the phone and then it's done. So again, you don't have that that connection we had anymore. It's just a lot, it's a lot less. If we could send out something like this in its own separate flyer, I know it's a little more expensive, but mm -hmm. I think that's probably gonna be one of our best routes. Yeah. A presentation on a website mm -hmm. and something like that in the flyer and hearing it from all of us, everybody we talk to. Because we know the COVID's gonna continue the way it is right now. So that 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 hands-on connection with some of our voters are probably never gonna happen ever again. Well, somebody's got some other. I wanted to make one additional comment that came up with conversation yeah. between Kurt and I as it pertains to the half percent sales tax and what it could potentially do that might help uh, the board understand too, but I also have firsthand knowledge as it, as it applies to the county. So Beltrami County, we pay a half percent sales tax that goes right to their streets and their highways. And then, and that was adopted in 2014, I think. Um, but there was a little law that came in six years ago, where if you order something online, you pay sales tax for it, that money, that's taxed also. If you have a half percent or 1% of city sales tax, that governing entity actually revenues that as well. So it's not just the footsteps that come through your businesses through town, it's also where that person's zip code is that governing entity is gonna get that as well. So Beltrami County actually, you, you would assume because of COVID, you don't have a lot more people going in to brick and mortars to buy things anymore, but because you do online shopping now, they their revenue for their half percent for 
um, their tax is actually higher than it was originally last year because of COVID. And Kurt actually noted that International Falls, a border city, you would think that they would have lost revenue because the borders are closed and nobody's going into Canada right now, but they're actually getting that um, additional percent through people ordering online. So it's more than what we could potentially get the Department of Revenue's input from, because what we are seeing those numbers from doesn't include that. like that on a flyer that sounds pretty interesting. So what I'm looking for tonight is just some <clears throat> some approvals and we'll part to partner with WizSets to create something. If you want me to do it on my own, I'm sure I can pull some stuff together with some samples, but I really like my team help with it too. Kurt, do you have any idea what your company could throw together and what it would what it would cost? Yeah, you know, we, we would put together, uh, summarize all the different um, infrastructure work from the capital improvement plan and PR and things so we could show that information and probably put, put together um, a more simplified PowerPoint. Um, uh, for something like this is going to cost us more than that, but we probably limit the charge to like $5,000 to the city. Um, and then if for some reason, Christina takes on more um, in some of the prep, then maybe it would even be less than that, but it wouldn't exceed that. Our current capital improvement plan doesn't have enough in it. Or in the idea what the information that it has, it does. It's just, I would like a little help with it because I'm not really sure how to spin it. A gamble one way or the other. No. If I'd help, it'd probably help you. Yeah, more. I'm not confident enough to do this on my own. I agree. Thank you. I've written a lot of grants, but I've also used a lot of people's, I've also used a lot of other people's grant applications to help out in order to get things approved. So I'm not working with one great. And if they can word it better for us, then it'd be a better chance we'd it yeah. happen anyway. So. Yeah. That's all I'm thinking anyway. I go ahead with it, Christina. Okay. That's my my take on it. I don't know. If you want to have a, an official motion or something like that, you can do that the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. I'll, let, I'll ask Kurt to put something together and send me a, a contract proposal and we can discuss it. You guys can discuss it again on the 5th. Does that work for you, Kurt? Yep, I can put together. One and I'll kind of just leave it open the scope for, for whatever Christina needs from us. So, all right. Good. Good. Okay. Thanks, Kurt. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good rest of your evening. You too, sir. Hazardous commercial structures project. Is that what we're calling it now? Potential new business project. I had downtown revitalization, and that was made everybody really confused too. Something we should have with hazard. Well, it kind of stems off of the grant application. Too. All right. I, I don't have a lot to update you at this point. Um, 
the city attorney is going to try to partner with the development court um, attorney and see how much um, more effort the uh, tax liens that are on the DVD can get put through. Right now, we uh, the development court is at a, um, a roadblock, if you will, because they do not have ownership of the DVD name, but also at the same time the grant the, out, the grant application time period isn't done yet so might have another month or two trying to get clear title on the DG name on the project so we won't run out of time for the grant you know if we do max at best they can apply again in october if it's but it's I don't know. The timing is all going to hinge on how long it takes to get the clear title by clear deed on this property. So we're just going to keep pushing forward, sure. trying to keep going in, until the um, the deed announcement or the grant announcement is done. And I don't think we got anything new to report from the unspent budget, huh? Oh, it sounds like we're going to bring it up next month's meeting. Next month. So there was nothing discussed at your Thursday meeting? Nothing to do with the remaining balance. This was just a kind of a budget meeting. Oh, okay. Budget going to Mary Ann's house, but it's supposedly April. April. Well, I thought I remember saying that, but I was like, I You may have, and I was in. I might, have said it, I might have said it was both. I'm pretty sure okay. it's next month for sure. You've got my minutes, my notes from the meeting though. Yeah. Okay, thanks. That being said, Kim Freeman did, well, Mike reached out to Kim, Kim reached out to me. Yeah. To tell us that he would be willing to, to sell the city the building right next door to the library, so. <coughs> and that would help all the time. That's just no, I'm not gonna throw a number <coughs> on this. <laughs> right here <laughs> but whatever it is you know it's probably negotiable everything is but he is open to the to the sale of the building any tenants that are in there now do they ever get started till later he's, he's, working, on he's, working, on he's, he's, he's working every angle he can to but obviously if the building was sold then they would be out before that Absolutely. I wouldn't want to inherit that kind of a problem. Uh, any other old business? Now the fun part. Did everybody get a chance to watch that webinar from the week? No. If you want to go through the slides real quickly. Um, okay, so I I sat on a webinar uh, last week that the League of Minnesota Cities hosted, and if you get an opportunity to watch it, I would encourage you to do so. It's about an hour. The majority of the time period, um, they go through a lot of Q and A, and that's probably what I'm going to highlight tonight. So, on um, March, when was it? March 11th. I would say that a lot of the Q and A was really dependent upon further. Yeah. Yep, yep. March 11th was when Biden, our president, signed the new um, relief act. Um, that's when most of us started seeing new third stimulus check. So just a little history, um, 130 billion for local governments um, from this new local fiscal recovery fund is going out through municipalities and counties. Um, 65 billion is allocated to cities with a modified community development block grant formula. And what that means is cities that are in top of populations of 50,000 or more are gonna get those grants directly from the federal government. So obviously we don't qualify in that. However, 19.5 billion of the funds are going to cities under 50,000. And those, and the states will be sending those funds directly to the cities. 
So next slide on the allocation. Oops. Sorry, it's still the allocation method um, just shows again that if you're over 50,000, it's going to be a grant, and under 50,000, it's going to be allocated based on your population, not to exceed 75% of your most recent budget as of January 27. The populations are based on the most recent census numbers of 2019. Um, further, the approximate amounts for Minnesota local government um, are based on $100 per capita for cities under 50,000. That link in the spreadsheet. Um, gives you a rough estimate of what you're gonna of what your city will get. It boils down to about ninety thousand dollars, which is roughly thirty thousand more than what the city received in the CARES funding back in 2020. The allocation method or the it's gonna come in two distributions. Um, it's going to come in two distri distributions. The first half is 60 days after enactment. The enactment was March 3rd, uh, March 11th, so the city should see it on or around May 11th of 2021. The state's going to distribute the payments no later than 30 days after they receive the payment. That's written in the bill. There's nothing they can do. They have to send it out. Um, if they have to, they have to get an extension from the, from the federal government. That's only half of what the allocation will be. The second half is supposed to be allocated to the cities not earlier than 12 months after the first distribution, which would be a year later. The uses have drastically changed um, compared to the CARES funding. It is um, still greatly focused on um, government entities, not enterprise funds. Um, but what is nice about the biggest change is that it can be used for uh, COVID related expenses from March 3rd, 2021, all the way to December 31st, 2024. And that's why it's split up in two different payments. So that if something happens to come up COVID related <coughs> in the future, you have the time to actually still utilize it. And that begins to tell you how long the process has really are making this. This is, gonna, this is going to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a very good point. Um, the eligible uses that can be done for assistance to households, small businesses, nonprofits to aid in the response of, a pub, of the public health emergency, or to aid hard hit industries such as tourism, travel, and hospitality. <coughs> And wastewater infrastructure. Yep, I'm getting to that. <laughs> I'm getting to that. Premium pay for essential workers, which are classified as workers that are needed to have con continue um, the operations of your of your critical sectors of government. So your street workers, your police, your fire. Um, and there's some details in there on how it would pay them up to an um, amount of twenty five thousand per eligible worker now. There are more treasury guidance coming in on this premium pay. I don't know if it's a gap funding for what they're making now. If you had an employee that had to go on unemployment because or sick pay because of COVID, they only paid X amount of their sick pay and then you can make up that amount. There's gonna be a lot of um, guidance coming forward from the treasury on this. So please keep in mind that what I'm showing you from the lead is all they have at this point. But if you do have questions, jot them down. Christina, um, in that slideshow presentation from the league, it also stated that uh, the cities were sent out a letter to state how much uh, unemployment was used by the city. Yep, and I, receive that? I, I do have that and I will touch on that. Okay. Yep. Um, the next slide continues its eligible uses discussing revenue replacement for the provision of government services. Um, it does not include enterprise funds. So basically in the last few slides, you said will not, does not help with the shortall. 
right now, there's some questions I'm going to go through at the end, Shonda. Right now, it doesn't look like it does. Because but they, it, that's that's all I need to know. Yep. Well, they said that they're going to refer to the treasury, so it possibly could. It still could. I've got a couple more notes here. I'll go over. Because they were considered essential uh, during the shutdown. So the liquor yeah, store was true. considered essential. <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can't get rid of those questions. <laughs> all right. So can I continue? Yes, I just had that question. Perfect. I mean, I don't know if we're not okay. supposed to ask questions. Or? No, 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 no. No, okay. I just want to know if I'm ready. If it's okay for me to continue. Go. Yes, go, go <laughs> forward. I just okay. Nope. To I want you guys to ask questions. Um, so to extent the reduction in revenue due to COVID related public health emergency relative to revenues collected in the most recent fiscal year prior to the emergency of 2019. So like I stated earlier, it is uncertain at this point, the league is uncertain if enterprise funds are going to be allowed. And that includes the liquor store, the golf course, if we had a community center, a campground, anything that may have impacted your city's enterprise fund. However, one of the other eligible uses that's new that has created a lot of conversation is the statement where it says investments in water, sewer, or broadband, broadband infrastructure. I must say that word. Um, and that can be, you know, if you had to improve on a main or a sewer or water main, but it can also be revenue replacement for water and sewer accounts that could have potentially have been lost revenue due to someone that was not able to pay their bill, that the city did not have that essential um, payment because of that. Um, the other thing that's eligible is transfers to other nonprofit organizations, um, public benefit corporations, special purpose unit of government, other state tribal organizations. I can tell you right now that if we're going to get ninety some thousand dollars, the city is going to try to use it as best as it can. Um, I actually want to form a committee if we can before this money even gets here. Um, so the next slide talks about not eligible uses. Um, they cannot <coughs> be used to directly or indirectly offset tax reductions or delay a tax or tax increase. So obviously your property taxes um, that pay to um, fund your levy, it, you can't put it in that way. So if somebody can't pay their property taxes, you can't put it in there to offset that. I, I guess what I think of most about it is that it's it can be the use <coughs> to replace lost revenue, just not that revenue. Just not that kind of compensation. <laughs> right. yeah. If you can't pay your water and sewer bills, yeah, you, you know. lose money, but it's not just it's, right. it's revenue, but it's certain revenue. And it's it's kind of it's going to be really tricky, I yeah. guess. Um, and then again, funds can't be deposited into any pension fund. So the next slide kind of talks about the timeline um, when it was induct, enacted into law. Um, about May 10th, 60 days after enactment, is when the first distributions are going to come. About June 9th, <coughs> uh, distributions from the state, unless Minnesota files an exemption. May 2022 will be the second distribution and then the spending deadline is 2024, December 31st. There will be reporting, mandatory reporting, just like I did um, last year for all this money. But here's, so there's some key points I wanted to make that differs from the CARES funding we got in 2020. <coughs> Obviously the first key point is there's more funding, okay? It's increased. <coughs> When the CARES funding in 2020 was allotted, it was a $78 per capita funding. It's now $100. So the money is still there, but it'll also weigh very heavily on how much that money gets to the state. Um, the last funding had absolutely no formula for distribution. The state had to figure that out. This is coming directly from the federal government. So that's the guideline that we're going with. And that's why we know at this point how much, again, based on per capita, the city will potentially get in. And then also this one doesn't have an ending date like the other one did. That was my next point I was going to say. Last time, all the money had to be spent by November 15, 2020, or it had to go back to the county and just had another month to meet the funding. We did everything we could to utilize the $63,000 that the city 
received and we got any use at all. Okay. And that <clears throat> created that reason OSI got a lot less money as we're going all the way to 2024. We got 68 grand in a year. Now we're getting 90. Grand. We got 68 for year. For six, six months. 63 or, grand in like five months. Yeah. So really, yeah. I, but, it's not going to be hard over three years to spend that kind of money. But, but a very valid one of the points you got to remember is last year was we didn't peak here in COVID until October. That's when we saw it in this town. There's places across the state that were peaking six months ahead of us. So we were already at the tail end of using our money and the deadline to use it. And that's when we started having COVID cases in town. So it may look like it's less, but if COVID is almost done in Beltrami County, then, you know, what you're using the money for is not necessarily just COVID-related expenses at this point in the next two years. Okay, so I also would say noted on the thing that some of your projects didn't even have to be shovel ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna get to that. I wrote a bunch of the notes down from the Q&A sessions because I wasn't sure how many people had watched the webinar. Um, okay, so more time to spend. That's one of my points. We probably need to put a committee together to try to find the best course of action to utilize this money. Um, that way we use it over the course of the two years, but well, actually the three years to think about it. But we're also utilizing it the best way we should for the taxpayers. Um, there are still some final numbers that are gonna get worked out. I guess in the state, there was 47 cities that were left off the list. That could lower that number of $90,000, it could increase it because it's a per capita basis on the total of the state city. Um, again, I already touched on a 2019 census. Um, in this year, in this money, counties um, can't get the money back. So last year, if you didn't use all your money, you transferred it back to the counties or the counties acted as a judiciary for a lot of the townships that didn't have clerks. So they distributed the money. Beltrami County got a lot of them from all the townships and they sent the money to the townships. Now, because of those distribution guidelines, all of the towns and cities are getting the money. The county has no um, hand in that portion of it and you don't transfer it back to them if you don't use it, you use it all. Um, lost revenue, can it be used on 2020 period? It's unsure of at this time. Um, the broadband and water and sewer use, they have questions if it can be used. Is it for infrastructure projects not related to COVID-19? That's still kind of uncertain at this point. Um, it seems like the use is much broader. Like it's not a COVID related reason utilize this money we're going to put it on um, water sewers on the upgrade roads upgrades haven't been determined yet we don't know if we can use it for street materials or they something did like say that. that we can do parks still correct i don't recall that point i thought they said something about a park or a campgrounds 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 possibly um there's also a question that's uncertain if the funding can be combined with any other funding received for other projects. Right now, what comes to mind to me is we have federal money that we're getting from USDA, hopefully with a little um, public works and police facilities. My brain goes, can any of this funding be utilized for the city's out of pocket for either the interim interest on the construction loan to create the building or maybe some of the architectural or other out of pocket fees that the city's already approved for doing so. Those are the questions that come up in my mind. Um, that one section on a qualifying and eligible expense of being able to get it to the, uh, the households and the people in the cities, one of the questions came up is we can issue checks to households as an assisting program. Based on the language of the bill, yes, we could. Do we wanna do that? That's a question for the city. Um, it's not gonna be, we can't use it for school districts. They're already getting their own funding, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, pay wages, yes, it's for COVID related, obviously. 
the question about the liquor stores came up, if it can help offset the revenue from the municipalities that lost revenue due to capacity limits. Right now, only government services are included, but more guidance will come through to see if it becomes eligible. So it's a maybe. Yep. You didn't sound so positive when he said maybe. I don't know. Again, please keep in mind this is, you know, a month old and that's it. Um, city utilities, if there's people that have unpaid water bills, can the money be used to write off bills? That's a good example of lost revenue according to the lease. Um, it is a government service, so yes, if you chose to do that. Um, right now, I think our 60-day delinquency list is fairly small. There's actually been people from what I've seen in utilizing, um, their stimulus checks for good reasons, they're paying their top bill, their capacity water bills. So we don't have a lot of people in here from our city. Um, no. Now, another, another idea, question that came up is if um, the city could state, use credits or put state credits on people's statements for utilities that are due. Um, you know, if you wanted to give, the city wanted to give everybody, you know, $40 on their, on their utility bill just to help them. Could it be used for that? Yes, it could. Um, they think it would need a little bit more guidance to the treasury. Um, more questions came through about the investments in water and sewer projects. Again, like I stated <coughs> earlier, it would have to be necessary investments and it would have to be treasury approved. Uh, last year, the money had to be used as an expense that was not already in the budget. Right now, as the way the bill is written, there's no restrictions on that. So that's a big difference too. Um, topic brought up about improving technology, whether it comes from telework or um, hybrid meetings, uh, as, as it looks in the bill that that would be a qualifying eligible expense. Obviously, PPE still an eligible expense. Um, last question I wrote down is the unemployment thing, where we're at. Okay. Um, as it sits right now, the Minnesota Department of Unemployment has not charged the reimbursing cities or accounts the unemployment that was charged them for quarter two and quarter three of 2020. Um, some of the funding that the state is going to get from this new bill is going to offset those charges. Um, I received a statement and I could put it in the packet or at least deliver it to the department head so they can see. Um, right now, approximately 50% of all of those charges are going to get um, forgiven. If the city leaves anything to be charged, it won't be until after quarter two of this year. Um, I believe our quarter two bill that was not charged to us last year was around $10,000. The majority of that was the liquor store. So that forgiveness right now, it helps immensely. Um, and if it continues to get 50% or more forgiven, um, then that will, again, help the bottom line of the liquor store. So. That's the webinar in a nutshell. I still encourage you guys to watch it because I watched it a second time today and I still had questions and wrote some notes down. I'd like to know how fast the treasury is going to get some guidance. Well, and that was one of the questions is when, when are they going to have it? Um, I separately emailed the council this uh, this note from the League of Minnesota Cities that came out today called the American Rescue Plan Act Provisions of Interest to Cities. It just kind of boilerplate some of the things that this act is doing on a global scale, not just what we talked about today. Highlighting things like employee benefits, economic assistance to individuals and families, which goes over the stimulus check, small business assistance, public safety, transportation infrastructure, health and human services, housing, utilities, broadband, and nutritional assistance and educational assistance. That they're summarizing to um, the public what that bill is funding right now. 
all I did was talk about how our city can utilize the funds when we receive them. I'm not going to ask for questions because I won't be able to ask them. <laughs> but what I would suggest strongly is that the county would consider forming a committee, maybe a makeup of the finance committee that we already have and the department heads to try to brainstorm and plan out where this funding should go. Can all four counselors sit on that on that meeting without it violating open meeting law? Mm. No, it would be legally and I'd have to advertise it. I would suggest that all four counselors have the meeting here on our work session and then just get updates from the department so we can answer that all in question as well. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you want the department heads to formalize how they would use the funds and then report back at a work session? Correct, so that all, we, we have their individual input as well, so we can discuss it as a council instead of having one or two council members on the board trying to think of what the other two or three people would think of. That'd be my suggestion. I've, I've been, I've stated all the past here. Did I have any input? <laughs> um, well, I, I hate to be a, but that'll make work sessions. I mean, if you're going to address that in every work session, updates, that's going to make long work sessions. I mean, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. I'm sure when this room live in town that this money would go for. Pardon? How many people in this room right now would that money benefit as the city? As a taxpayer? Yeah. Well, I live in town. Melissa? Matt? Hey. Me? Hey. Children? Jason? Yeah. You? You? No? Yeah. <clears throat> that's so that we should have an input too. Or we need to get some other people that live in town to input too. So, what are you proposing then? Some people in town to figure out where this money's going to go, not people that don't live in town. So other than your department heads, and you call <coughs> more yeah. people, or you would say department heads don't shouldn't have a say, is what you're saying? No. No. But Get the input from the people that work in town that you work for, or oh, that work you, with you. You mean the local businesses? As yeah. Well. Oh, oh, I got you. More local. I so kind of just like do what we did last time. Ask the local businesses, or do we just fire, or we just cold call them and ask for our emails? Well, when it came to the um, the money that we uh, sent to HRDC, or HRFD, and they helped with the small <coughs> grants, uh, I worked directly with HRFD okay. and watched what other municipalities were doing, like Bemidji and Kirkton, and I patterned off of oh and. Um, Budget, and I patterned off of other municipalities to find the best suggestions to the council to utilize that funding. The problem is, is that we're just, I mean, if we're going to, if we're only going to use it for COVID related expenses, um, I think we're, we're minimizing ourselves. This is just my, my two cents in the matter. I would like, I think this city needs to be very innovative on how that money is going to be spent. Not just reimbursing a bunch of people to think. Because I don't know, I'm not a doctor. I don't know what those numbers are doing in Bill Trenton County. I don't know how much more impactful it's going to be as a, um, on a worker standpoint. If we don't know if Waltz is going to shut us down again. Right. No, that's kind of where I think Jason was going with with the whole three year mark. We should save a lot of that money. Uh, me personally, I would take it like every every year, take a percentage of that of that money and be able to spend it for that year. On, in preparation, like you said, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. And that's for a long, long haul outlook. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we were encouraging that stuff next year, this year, mm -hmm. three years. Yeah, be real cautious about spending it. Spend it all and, in and don't do it all in one time. Small. That's yeah, exactly right. Well, my two cents are you four live here, that's why you're sitting where you are. It's your guys' decision. So I don't know that you need a bunch of other people in meetings. You guys are the people, that's why you're sitting where you're sitting. 
All right, and, and, and that's kind of why I brought up to the, uh, for us to do a set of work session because your input is very, very important. I just don't think that we should have a, a, a board with you guys with more time out of your out of your lifetime to sit down and discuss five, 10 minutes worth of like down to set the, the pond if you guys really think we should do that. Police department, I think we used most of your, from last year, and we, we were scraping by to try to get some. Lights on late for being committed to anything. Exactly. Well, I'm not for anyone. But I think uh, we should take the brunt of this one. I don't care how much. Yeah. And keep that in your right. set of work sessions? Right. Okay. I think that's a Thanks. unanimous. Um, if you guys come up with some questions, too, you can get an email on Sandy or you can send us an email to bubble them up. So as soon as I hear treasury information, I've been watching the website for four weeks now. Let's see if there's anything more I can push in here. Looks like that's on the end of that. All right. Yeah, I would encourage everybody to rack your brain, see where how we can spend it. No, we're good. Hey, summer baseball. Who's in charge of that this year? Kayla Westfield? Westfield? Yeah. Weinfield? <coughs> she, I invited her to here to this meeting and or um, the April 5th meeting. And she had a conflict tonight, so I think we'll be here in April. Um, Black Tech Summer Baseball is, is going to go on this summer, and she's one of the committee members. So that's a good thing. Um, so she submitted to the council for review um, a public funds request form to help offset the insurance for their liability. Um, she detailed in where what portion of the money is going to be used for and where else she's asked for funding. Um, it looks like they're pretty much everywhere. Yeah. It, well, it looks like their um, insurance is. Like four hundred fifty dollars, which is pretty on par with what it's been in the past. Um, but they're asking for eight hundred because she says it varies from year to year. So this must be last year's annual request. Oh, it's a period six two twenty to six two twenty one. So she does not. It does not look like they've actually received a so an amount yet. They're requesting eight hundred dollars. What do they do if it's four hundred and fifty dollars? I would save that question for her next week, next time then. Because according to what she wrote, she said it will help us pay for our insurance. We're requesting eight hundred. Our policy varies a little every year. I've attached last year's premium, so this just has coverage of that for this. Because uh, I mean if we spend if we say, hey, let's give them nine hundred. And they yeah. spend 450. Mm -hmm. Can they take the other 450 and fill the concession stand, and then they make money off of that, or do they have to make it for next year? Well, I don't know. I just have to base that all entitled on how you word the. Uh, That's all on how you motion. how you give it to for the insurance. Then are they also the insurance part, or do we just leave it to? Can't can't say booster. It it would be exactly how the motion is written. Then. Right. So I don't think they could leave it blank. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, we so it they couldn't hold it and carry it over for next year. Well, it's based right here oh, okay. for the 2021 season. Right. I see that. Um, yeah, I would hope that uh, we could reach out and ask for a specific amount because, like I say, if we have the book name to, to give her a, a dollar amount, the uh, yeah, state funds that are being requested May 15th. Yeah, well, how was the liquor fund? You knew that was coming. Um, I was there when it got approved, and then we've been out of it for a while. So yeah, we're probably at like 21. Yeah, so. And we can wait until the fifth to yep. give you a statement on yep. that. And then I'll have your fund balance report in the packet, too, so you, if yeah, you guys so you can just discuss it further sure. at that point. I mean, there's been no donations. Just the. Four thousand at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Can't see. 
Like I said, they could take that 400, but I'm sure they could double it in the concession stand. Right, right. but if he makes a motion for insurance only, then. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's for. Because I know we're going to have the, where is the? Oh, the history center? The history center come up for their donation, and then we can give to Paul, and then we can. Well, if prom is going on, they may ask, but prom, the food yeah. trucks have their own. I don't know if the food trucks are going to ask for any money. Last year, the other thing that came up, oh gosh, was it last year or the year before? Graduation? Track asked for oh. funding uh, last year or the year before. Yeah, I think it wanted to say it was last year because they, they had a few that went to state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does Michelle look at it? I'm hoping they have prom because their DSD just announced that they're having graduation. Right. Person graduation. They are. It sounds like it's a little daily where they can just put it off by a week. So. So that was the last one. So they'll probably ask for funding there as well. Just a point of comment. I don't know what their budget is right now. I'm aware of the prompt and even how much time we got put away. Probably a lot from last year, too. Yeah. Once they get the prompt out of the way, we can move on. Yep. Uh, we'll get it in the packet for you guys. Thank you, Christine. Mm -hmm. We'll go to D. Hey, it's about time you got shirt. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I, mean, you know? I like it. I was blinded up. <laughs> I was in, almost on the verge of tears. Just a little bit ago. I know, right? Ooh. Well, laptop. It's like a magnifier that can. Okay, so <laughs> I want to have this conversation with you guys because I realize that I've made some improvements to. City Hall that are, you know, definitely visible, but one of the unvisible things, unless you're in a meeting, is the bandwidth that's getting pulled off my Chromebook to have hybrid meetings. So you noted tonight when Kurt was on the line with us how it blinked out and off and pink and it's timed out, but yet it, you could still hear him when he came back in. So uh, this little Chromebook that I've been running everything off of was really inexpensive when I bought it last year. The intention was for teleworking and traveling and that's it, and maybe presentations throughout um, you know, the year here inside City Hall, but then COVID hit, so I built this mechanism to actually have more hybrid meetings. And it's been working. The problem is, is that that little Chromebook has no hard drive. It has no processor. It has no internal memory. So I've got, instead of working with Wi-Fi, I've got a network adapter that I've got it plugged into so that it's hardwired because you get more than two people on a Zoom call and you record this meeting and the bandwidth drops like crazy. Um, and I think we all can agree that as soon as you said Chromebook, <laughs> was more than enough. Right. I've, I've asked the uh, uh, MIS to give me a quote on a suitable laptop. It could be utilized for teleworking and other things too, but I need something out here with a processor and, a, and, and memory to actually do this justice. If I get that then, the, the, the YouTube live option for the Zoom meetings, I can do here and right away instead of having to record the meetings and then post them. Um, so there will be more live interaction with your meetings too, or any for that matter. So, so you'll be taking the laptop, said laptop, like on vacation? I get vacation? <laughs> <laughs> no. Actually, I was bored as soon as I was seeing the discount. Yeah. Nope. You know, $1,900 discount? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And um, you can't go wrong. And I'm not going to put Microsoft Office on this because a lot of applications that I'm working, if I am out of the office, I can see through my Chrome platform. So I really don't need that. Plus any web, uh, you guys already get your Outlook on your web app. That can still be used. So I don't believe it needs Outlook, which is an additional cost. I just need something that isn't a Chromebook to do so this meeting totally process agree. justice. Yeah. You'd be able to access your computer from I mean your city just one thing. I could do that now with but, with Chrome if I wanted to. Okay. Yeah. 
I have just a simple VPN. Right. Shout out to the young people department. Right. Sure. Um, so Kurt, when he was on there and every other person that we have on Zoom calls can hear us just perfectly fine? Or do we need to uh, have you add to the update the mic as well? They can hear us, not one of them. Right. That's okay. <laughs> can we do with some kind of update to the mic? Yeah. You know what? I talked to MIS about that and they said the this because of the way we're doing this, unless we had City Hall um, outfitted with an audio system, which we don't, it would cost a lot more money in order for that to be really good. The only other thing that I can try to do is buy a better boom. Okay. Can you split her up? Can you split her up? That's what I was thinking, like a dual mic system. I've asked you, I've asked MIS, they don't think the current system will work. You can't put two microphones on and have them work simultaneously together. You probably get interruptions. Or I think you do get that. interruptions, but I just don't think the system knows which one to pick up, especially if we're doing a Zoom call and have to dedicate a specific microphone, speaker, and video to that unit. That makes sense, yeah. So I'm kind of hindered by some of the Zoom restrictions, too. Is this always on, though? Yes. Run splitter right there until it runs off the same line. If the mics are always on, it should all feed in there. I can try it. This unit, this unit was $80, so I can try another one, and hopefully that'll pick up. I know that if you guys have seen the, the recordings, one of the other problems is if you just look at the Chromebook right now, the way the feed is, it's not pixelated. But then you look at how it's transferring up to the other um, webcam, it gets extremely pixelated. So I'm trying to create something a little bit more professional, but yet also just I don't want it to time out. When we did the library meeting, Nance could see us, but we couldn't hear her. So I had those people call on my cell phone, so at least the audio was there real time, not is, delayed. Is that because we're using a free Zoom? It's not a free Zoom. Oh, I actually got a discount and got a full membership last year during COVID. How long was the library meeting? I did not record it. So I'm just curious. It was an hour. Hmm. I've got class that usually goes two and a half hours long and we don't get timed out at all. It was, oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't a timeout for the meeting. It was, it was the voice. Oh, I got you. You couldn't hear. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was like what just happened with her tonight. Audio. It was the glitches. Correct. I understand. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I definitely do. I'll, uh, I'll yeah. bring it to the phone. Yeah. What is the premier discount, by the way? I think that is what uh, MIS gets for a having a large account so and being sure able to, and having that large technology department to go hands on. They get a big discount when they buy large amounts and they okay. supply by cap county, you know, cities and regions. Mm -hmm. No, I was just wondering what, you know, if it was like a state program like we did with the trucks. Or oh, anything, or probably or just, uh, something to work with government aid out together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know I was hoping for like a thousand dollars and this was lesser than what he first gave me. Okay. Okay. Mike? Yeah. What do you want now? Bogger, huh? Let's spend yeah. some money. A couple of the things are on the desk and what do you want to start with? The packet. In the packet. Uh, I do it in order. I got a fogger, drone, and then trailer. Okay, fogger. <laughs> we talked about it briefly a year and a half ago as I recall. Really? Yeah, very briefly. If you look at it, you know what it is. Mosquito fogger, bug fogger. I've used them, so I know what they are. This is the exact brand that I've actually operated before. Um, I told this guy who also coincidentally I believe runs the City of International Falls Public Works Department and worked with on the side. Um, essentially you can see what the cost of it is. The, the two differences there when it says without command and with command, that command is a GPS 
uh, unit. And what that allows it to do is it actually ties in with the vehicle. It knows what speed you're going and it will either, if you're going faster, put out more of the, uh, the I want to say chemical, but it's really not so much chemical, put more or less out based upon your speed. And it's actually saved everybody quite a bit of money that has switched over to these units. Um, when you do this, most cities that are running one of these, you're generally spraying once a week, um, Thursday evenings, generally, uh, to get a good fill for the weekend when you know that's when everybody's outside the most. And the other thing they're doing is passing this cost along. So the cost of the materials and the time to have either myself or one of the guys out doing it in the evenings. Um, and the way they do that is they, they put a, a section on their utility bill and it comes out to usually around $2 a month per connection. So, you know, if your, your house is hooked up to city water and sewer, that's kind of how you're, you're charged along there. At two bucks a month, I mean, I'm sure you guys, when's the last time you bought a can of bug spray? It's about seven bucks a can now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Roughly. Depending on the size of your family, what's that last a weekend? When you're doing something? Yeah. With this, you know, we're able to do all of town. Um, I think the, the chemical itself, it's, it's an oil-based chemical and it's, it's completely safe for, you know, people, pets, all that. Do you have to repeat that? I don't believe so, no. Wow. No. Oh, I'd have to double check for you and make sure, but I don't believe that that's how it works. That might be an issue for some people, I don't know. Well, you've got tons and tons of small towns running this exact setup. Like I said, I, I ran it before I came over here. And the people love it. They absolutely love it. When you can walk outside all summer long, and, and not yeah, worry yeah. about getting carried off because the sun is starting to go down or because you live next to a little bit of water. It makes a big difference. Okay, Mike, that's, that's exactly what I was just going to ask you. You're going to be running around where there's water, but it's not like in the middle of the town, correct? No, I'll be running right through town. What's the purpose? You're running that? everywhere. Yeah, right. The but purpose is because you or your neighbor or anybody that's got an old tire laying there or oh, anything that holds right. where water. they can breathe, you run through and you, you kill them off. Okay. Yep. Water. Yep. So mm -hmm. I would probably, based on the city size and what I know, what I've ran, I would guess that we would use, I'm just a total guess, if we're just looking at just town here. Not Pine City Park. Right, the, right. The and side. those are obviously things that we're going to want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're looking at just town, maybe Pine Tree Park mixed in there. Uh, five five to seven gallons at the most every time I spray. And you're looking at a cost of, I believe, I'd have to get it from a price of the chemical of $34 a gallon for a gallon and a half. I, I can't remember the exact cost on that. And there are different manufacturers that I can get um, the, the chemical through. One of which is this guy and the other is uh, semi-local team lab on the Detroit Lakes. So from understanding you're right, you're gonna run through town for everybody that's got a water and sewer bill? That's how it gets charged up. It, it gets charged based on utility hookups. But could we also charge? We're add, open to- we could, we could add an additional surcharge to our campers too. Well, I, I, you I, could do, we could charge like, it anyway. We're wrong. max is that. You, I believe you have a well max. Like he, he don't have a lot of sewer lines. Mm -hmm. Or if you go down on the Bailey Road, you know, there's certain in our town, but you know. Yeah, and, and there are like our street and light fees. A exactly. few of those here lights. and there that would have to be, you know, charged accordingly. It's just generally when you're within the city limits, usually you're on water and sewer. So I'm just saying we're going off utility. Gotcha. You know what I mean? We can take each individual one as it needs to. So as far as liquids per summer seasonal it'd be three to thirty five hundred yeah i, I mean you don't have that five for, but yeah something like that i would guess so at you know five to seven gallons a week 
read the fine print comic as far as as far as what's actually coming out of it. That so you want to know the console so that components. you know sure. you know what I mean. Yeah, what save? What file save? Yes. Um, so one, and the CSG. Oh yeah, I can yeah. get that. Right. Another question. Another question that I could uh, foresee coming up is, uh, what else are going to kill the veterans here? Is it going to kill the bee population even more than we're already having? You know, in in my experience, I I don't know exactly how it works, but it's legitimately pretty much just mosquitoes. Okay. When I sprayed it in the past, you know, I, I drove the truck around with the windows open for three hours every Thursday. I lived in town. I didn't have a problem. I mean, I damn near drank the stuff. <laughs> driving around. Grand Forks did it. I lived right in town. And you couldn't see across the alley. You walk through it. Those big ones. They drop it off a water bottle and they park. Big pumps. Big pumps. Right. Those are the campground every every Friday or Sunday or whatever. And, and it would really drive does. right through it and pull it on the trailer. Oh, yeah. It don't it don't they have do. an odor. It has a perfume smell to it. It's actually. Well, I mean. I'm your, not your, disagreeing. Your flies, your spiders, all that, they, they all still live. seem to be around. Okay. They so all good. Yeah. It's <laughs> like it just it takes <laughs> beast to it. It's not the fuckers I eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's 100% beast. Okay. So it's just mosquitoes for biting flies to kill people. Got it. Okay. I'm asking. Let me look it up for right. everybody okay. and find oh. out for sure. Because, like I said, there are various chemicals. That right. you can use with this. There's water based, there's oil based, there's different manufacturers of it. Each one I'm sure is its own thing. No, so I'm, if you want me to say pick one or two yeah. and, and bring those to you so you can see what it kills, what it doesn't kill. And we, we can come up with there. a good strategy of how it would be planned out. I know or, right. I, I know that we have a bee farmer that has his hives over by a um, four clover four clover uh Storage units over there. I just don't want him to say that we killed the bees. Right. <laughs> because I don't think we need that that long. <laughs> no, no sure. like, looking at the oh, picture, that right. tank are they interchangeable? Like, say, if you use two different chemical milks. Yeah. Like oh yeah. You can all we would have to do, all we would have to do is just rip just the switch system. tanks so you're not always cleaning them. Yeah. And actually, generally, other than the the holding tank, generally when I'm done spraying every night. I just quit do essentially what's called a backwash on it and clear the system out other than the holding tank itself. Cool. And that would be easy just to it's all it's all water solid oh, clean cleanup, you know, easy. So I mean we could we could use it on the golf course too. So like use it on the golf course funded from a number of entities. Right down to the beach. Yep. When you're doing a campground is horrible. Yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd get a lot more campers if you could knock that down. If somewhere. you knock that down. And there's some places that actually advertise that they spray for mosquitoes in the campgrounds well, on the website. Uh, I'm another sure probably gonna pay for it that way then. Uh, uh, we could add a chemical? surcharge we could just add an additional charge to our campground start camping fees and I could look at how much rental we actually have out. I don't think we've actually changed the camping fees for um, no, I did it two years ago. But if you if you did the campground more than you do here, and you pretty you pretty much are guaranteeing the campers no mosquitoes, mm -hmm. they'll pay you yeah. very yeah. well they to pay have no mosquitoes for the The other thing with it too is that I've done in the past is uh, renting out your service with that. Hmm. Um, if someone's having a, a family gathering on their property or something, you know, you have a little waiver type of deal and it's yeah within x many miles of town we'll come out and do it for you for 100 bucks 150 bucks whatever it is so there's that option to earn some money back with it too yeah because within the summer it'd probably pay for itself no i understand that but uh, your city did have to have a different liability or, or um, uh, form that they had to find uh, fill out no I thought it's Rachel a little bit today that you got her number because I didn't really ask her. But yeah. All right. And also, also, we don't have to have any, because there are municipalities, we don't have to have any special license to spray. So we're just all free on that. Oh, perfect. Good on that. Do you want me to bring you that stuff for the meeting then? So 
Yeah. Or would you like, or would you guys like more discussion of the word discussion on how like this actually kind of gets this far? I think we should bring it and see where we can go from there. Good. See if we can nail something down in a short amount of time. Good. As we're losing weeks here, the summer's coming, the buggies are coming. Sorry about the cabin this weekend. You might see a little baby mosquito for us. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> They're coming. And people are going to want to be outside a lot more. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good stuff. Oh, well, yeah, you can't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Okay, what are we on to of mine now? Drone. Drone. Okay, drone quote. No, I'm not a big kid. Well, I want the quote. We're not here to discuss that. <laughs> Whether or not. Yeah, we're, we're so here. here's the deal with the drone. Um, with our pond system and our spring irrigation site, part of the deal with the MPCA is that we need to be able to fully monitor our spring irrigation site. However, that's almost impossible for us because of the way it is. I'll gladly take any of you out there if you want to go and take a look at it. We can't get to a lot of places. They're low, they're wet. We just can't get there. So one option is we can put a road all the way around 160 acres through swamp and everything, which is going to cost us a ton of money and a ton of time. Or we can go with the drone that we are able to monitor our four irrigators, um, our, our pumps out there. We're able to monitor everything from the edge of the field. We can fly it out. We can check that our irrigators are all working properly. Because really, when the corner is up and things, we can't see anything. We can't hit the places. It's it's rough. Um, with that being said, we we can do all that. There's other places within my departments that we can use it. There's potential advertising that we can use it for um, at the campground, the golf course, getting things like that. And I have no problem getting what's needed in order to you know fly that and do all that stuff. So. That's the real short gist of it. MPCA says I need to be able to see my field, monitor, to know if we're ponding water, if we're sending water somewhere, you know, that it shouldn't be going, all that. That's the real root of what I have going on. I know I summed it up really quickly. That's pretty much what I figured it was for. That's, yeah. that's where it's at. You can see that I've put um, two different prices in here, or two different companies. One is thirty-seven hundred dollars, and one is twenty-nine hundred. And in my honest opinion, the cheaper of the two of these they gave you is the better drone. Oh, okay. Um, from all the research I've done, people I know that have them, I've talked to Jace. He actually owns a, a similar one at that brand anyways. Um, I talked to him about his experience with them. Looked online at review after review and read stuff and it seems that that company has the best bang for your buck. Um, they also have a, on there, I can't remember exactly what it's called now, um, but with the, this DJI Care Refresh for $149, that is a warranty and a I believe it's for the first year or two years. Yeah, you know it after one. Um, what that is is that they will completely replace the drone itself two times in one year. If you crash it, if it malfunctions, sure. if anything happens, they'll just replace it. The whole so thing. What does that do with like uh, flyability? You know how certain airline or airspaces and that that's like where that. me getting the proper uh, stuff for it you know, have to have the, a the FHA and all that. Them. there's nothing restricted there okay. where you'd be flying there's but, nothing you know you would not have to, you wouldn't have to communicate with anybody even flying right. over on somewhere there's some areas you're in yeah. believe it or not it's not illegal to fly a drone over city property well no no but it's there no i would <laughs> i'll go through and get everything that i need to have oh you're talking for. like twenty thousand feet up well, it's depending on for the most city part, ordinance and stuff like that. You know, and we don't know. have any city ordinances. No. You know, in but place. We never revised it. I was going to say, we never revised anything for the ordinance for Jason Hicks. Because he never, he never, he never approved me going to school. I need extra oh. training for law enforcement. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, his stuff is. So I have to, I have to go through a pretty extensive training 
Yeah. And we just never sent it. Um, fair enough. Because I wouldn't have to try. Because they think I'll spy on people with search warrants <laughs> and stuff if I have it, right? Yeah, oh, I've got that shot. I've tickled into that area yet. Yeah. 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 So my question is on that then, you know, we, we kind of have the over a certain dollar amount for if you, unless it's in the budget, I mean, technically it's in the budget and technically it's not in the budget. So right. I just want to clear. Please the budget a little bit. What's that? After we completed the budget a little bit. You know, it, it, that's what's what's within the budget is, to me, kind of gray. You know? But you'd almost be saving money with this oh, rather than sure. having to go out. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. nowadays these things can land themselves. and. Well, and that's that's part of that, that lower price one. It has top, bottom, front, and rear sensors, and it will literally drive itself if you drive it into a place where you're going to crash it it'll bring itself down and just drop it so yeah and even accounts for wind doesn't it yep and things like that yep this is the first bottle hole <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice if it could i don't think it's that bad you can get around a little easier with it but Maybe. nice pictures even oh. from above the wood carvers anything well it could be used and, for numerous and that's part of it you know once i once we get it and i've i've got it, it up and i've hit the Fluid a few times, I have no problem doing things like that. Or you know, block party type stuff. Exactly. Okay. Stuff that we want to show case or in. whatever. You can bring your fishing line way out in the ocean too when you're on your gear. <laughs> <laughs> it literally will fly your line way out. You can drop your line and fish. You don't need a boat to do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's a lot of uses for it besides oh, for no, the he city. Say it if he didn't try it all Amazon's all right. uh, <laughs> talking about trying to get them and uh, delivering one day delivery. Really? Oh yeah. There's so a lot. Of already testing it. Uh, so you're trying to say about the budget. Does that mean you've already bought it? I have. I no, have not. No, no, <laughs> no. I have it not. It was not discussed when we set a budget. This is an item that was not discussed. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it was a, a slightly smaller trailer. I shouldn't say acting one because it was both things. But that one was on the Diamond C, was I believe just shy of $13,000. I would have to look at it right now to know for sure. But Acme's price on it was just below nine. Um, I did try to reach out and I didn't hear anything back to get Acme's price, but looking at this price here, I would guess that we're probably gonna be down more around that 10 and a half to 11 price range. Um, I should have that by the next council meeting for sure for you guys. I wanted to bring you up to speed. Um, this is a 24 foot trailer, uh, 21,000 pound gross vehicle weight. If we needed to, we can put our backhoe on it and move it. I was gonna um, my that's what I was gonna ask too. Is it gonna be versatile yes. trailer? Yes, we can put range. just about any piece of equipment we have on it. Now by you adding the backhoe versus the skid steer and the vehicle and the trailer, you guys are now acquiring a new license? Running the pickup and the skid steer and the attachments, no, we shouldn't be. The backhoe, I would have to look into, but I don't know that the backhoe weighs that much more than our skid steer does. Okay. Because the skid steers are just so stout nowadays. Okay. And we've got all the weights on it as well. And okay. being in the city, aren't you exempt from that? Well, and that's, no. that's the other portion of it, is that as long as we're operating within our limits, um, then we are exempt. But if we were to drive it to Bemidji, I guess maybe. Okay. However, there, I think you're probably still exempt because you're within the course of your duties. Kind of like how the farmers, right. I run a 80,000 pound beef truck every fall and nobody cared less. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's kind of along those lines. That's how it is for a school with me. Like even if it's a, even on the border states, as like long we can go in the state. Yeah, well, within right. the state, but like we can go to Fargo and drop stuff off. We can now. Well, that's what the state trooper told me the last okay. time we had to go up to Fargo. But maybe, maybe it's, just it's right within a certain border, yeah, certain it's, distance yeah. of border. Sure. So that's something that I, I would strongly, strongly recommend that you really look into. Um, that trailer can also be used for our mowers so that we're not driving multi mowers all the way out to the mm -hmm. pond and back. Mm -hmm. From the village. Cemetery, the park. How many mowers do you think you can fit on this too? On that trail, on this trailer? Three, four, four, four six, all of them. All of them. <laughs> we could just all take into consideration the track costs, where and how low we haul that. It's going to cost more than that trailer to repair to yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they've been running mowers and no trailer for long before I came in. Yeah. The amount yeah. of tires that have been gone through and every other thing. What was the cost on the trailer, trailer, Mike? Not the, this is the MSRP. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, with? this is all I have on paper for you right now. I don't want to throw a number okay. for you to write down because I, I don't want to be wrong. I would guess 10 five to 11 would I always be my guess. guess. What's that? I always uh, guess higher. I'm just thinking probably 12 and a half. Could, could be. I, I'll have a hard number for you guys from the next meeting. But it's something I, I definitely think we really need to invest in. Not only that, you know, with the, the attachments that we have now, that was part of our issue um, this year with doing work out at the, the pond where we have the attachments and we have no way to get them there. Get them there. Yeah. So we were, we literally had chained them. Oh, no. So I'll haul them in the back and haul them, or I brought my personal trailer in. Oh. That's how we got the attachments here in the first place with my trailer. Uh, if you guys, you guys might not remember this, but way when Bob Senior was in Mike's position, a lot of a lot of the equipment that was used in the city it was, was his. his. Yeah. So it's there was personal. there was you know it's yes I know what, I know what Jason's saying, but that's. That's how the city was run a lot, and that's another reason why we paid Bob. We don't have the we don't have the for his stuff. Yeah. So yeah. This stuff's not uncommon in a lot of smaller towns. No, it really isn't. And that's since uh you brought that issue up, did we ever reimburse you for your time and your equipment? No, no, we didn't worry about it. Okay. Take it up on vacation. 
All right, so that's that, that's you had to uh, get the stuff here one way or another. No, I, I, I totally understand. I, I just don't want it to, you know, no. something breaks. So this is a public works wish list that we're looking at here. Yeah, this is a COVID nineteen. If you want to call it that, hey, if you call it a wish list, then that was a need to do. It's just a matter of when when do I get the stuff list. <laughs> that could be a that could be that could be the sticking point. I guess if I uh, I don't know the, to me the trailer is definitely that's I think definitely more that I, I think that's a that'd be more than that. I, I think the the biggest honestly if I were to sit here and we were talking about wish list wants mm -hmm. I I wish for the fog. Oh. The drone uh, is a necessity. We got to have it in the trailer. In my opinion, I think we got to have that too. So we have to have those two things. We've all lived with mosquitoes. Yeah. You guys right. haven't fogged here for how many years? Ever, right. ever. But on you can't a can't sign without a long sleeve shirt. And right. <laughs> the only difference there of these three things, the fogger legitimately will pay for it for itself. Right. When we set it up properly. Right. That's why I don't think it would be an issue for the fog. But the trailer is what I'm looking at. I mean. The, I, must, yeah. you know, I, I think any one of these things actually pays for, for itself for right. itself because how many sets of tires you say you go for a year hmm. on the mower correct probably a couple of twos and how many sets of tires you keep oh the set of tires on there so you're uh, what did i pay those for that big ones set? Are, those big ones are anywhere from one to one and a half depending on just just the zero turn the last yeah. set that i bought i think was like 350 bucks for the two tires. Can you go for how many of them? One for sure, most likely probably two, but we kind of limped through to make it one. Higher plus. You see the van? Yeah, no. It I should really be two a year. You yeah. gotta have good. We get to the point where we're sliding on the side hills. Yeah. So Yeah, I think it's gonna be more of a problem if we don't do it. Mm -hmm. We do it. So the trailer pays. All right. Bring you guys more stuff if we need. And we can vote and be happy. Well, vote. You might not be happy. Vote is money. That's all I have, guys. All right, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Great clean update, May 22nd. The Planning Commission has set a date to do the um, curbside pickup again, like we did last spring. Um, May 22nd, Saturday from 8 to 10 a.m. Um, the volunteers, I have a sign up list and it'll go on the utility cards for April and May. Um, the Planning Commission has asked the council to consider putting a little money into this so that we could allow some additional things to be picked up. Last year it was completely ruined just for things that were free. At the transfer station, I don't know how to put a dollar amount on this, but like a big question we had last year was when we pick up a mattress, and there was a big conversation about how much a mattress costs. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars, mm -hmm. and like, well, do that or not? I mean, last year we we almost filled one complete trailer, and you know, I thought it went really well at the curbside, so it took us an hour, two hours to do it. So it's the city that's willing to cover, say. 500 bucks worth of stuff. Then I got 20 square uh, shingles I'm ready to rip off. See how quickly that adds oh, up? Yeah. And that's because construction a materials right are a lot more expensive. $25 a ton. So I, I go back and forth on this conversation, you guys. I know we've, we've had this conversation in the past, and I've dealt with citywide cleanup in the past. Once it gets out there and we've done this for a couple of years, people will legitimately hold stuff in the corner of their garage. Until yeah, so they get rid of the garage. Well, the on their cleanup week? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like the more we do it, the more people notice it. And they'll be like, oh, that was yesterday. Dang it. You know? Now I got a problem. Well, see, like all electronics are free. So TV, refrigerators, washers. Exactly. Dryers, that's all free. Yeah. Don't take yeah. that. Big CRT monitors. Or do you take this stuff to the cell center? Yeah, yeah. cell center will take it. Yeah. So that was that. 
<laughs> I didn't do that. No. I got no business. I, you only hear when they approve the agenda, so I'm sorry, but. Can we still hear it? Okay. So can we hear it or no? Yes, we can hear it through Lizard. Um, I have up unex, uh, unexpected operational expenses that are pretty substantial and we can move forward if we're going to continue operating uh, with the new legislation and stuff. <coughs> the standard protocol is any major officer involved um, use of force incident with ECA takes you down to your under list. Mm -hmm. That being said, our part timers work for another agency and they can't be without their gear if they're working for us. So we need to provide our off our part timers with gear at all times. Right. Full combat gear? Full police gear. The plus is all of us have been doing it long enough that we have a, a, a decent amount of our personal gear. So every officer is going to be a different line item of what they need. I only need one extra gun. I only need, <laughs> I only need you know, one of these things, two of these, three of these, four or some. Um, but if we're going to have a part-time force, we have to do it. And I do not have that budget. If we cut our budget as slim as possible, this is something that was not seen. And that's individual officer equipment or shared equipment? Yeah. Through all uh, some, I'm saying as cheap as I can. I'm getting only one more radio for four or more officers. Right. I mean, I'm just... I'm doing our absolute bare minimum. We're still only going to run two cameras. Right. So when we have an event going on, we're not all going to have the equipment we need. We're going to have to make sure somebody with all the radio stays with somebody with the radio. It's not how I want to do business, but this bill's big enough already. Um, you have a detailed like seven thousand. I was just going to say it's seven thousand. It's seven thousand thirty-eight dollars. Of that, I got the cheapest radio, which is what I have for twenty-two hundred. Only had to buy one gun for four people. Um, I'll just, I'm not going to even say what they are, but quantity three, two, one, 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 two, one, two, one. I'm not going, I'm not, if we wanted to outfit everybody and we're not using our own personal equipment, this would be three times that. So it's, it's absolutely, I'm not saying this is an operational thing. If we want to maintain, we, have, we haven't had a part time that worked for us in like two months. Because not equipped, trying to wait to see what happens with things and this not going anywhere. Now, do you use that money that's coming? That's kind of what I was kind of yeah. I think that would be part of the um, some of and some of it we could too. Because I mean, should we be sharing radios with COVID? No, but we're also not buying all, all the radios, we're gonna have to. Just I, I was setting a second spot with another computer when it qualified in that, so yes, um, well, I could see us using some of our upcoming funds for to cover some of that but i mean in the meantime yeah we, yeah. What we need to do it like yesterday right because like you said we're so, not having part-timers until we get yeah, yeah we're, we're, it's me and andy and that's it is it Andy's possible? busy and yeah. really busy right now is it possible to get a copy of that yeah i can do it for yeah. everybody or yeah it's i got some chicken scratch on it too so yeah, that's, that's great yeah, all right so, um, decipher. I, I don't know if this is a question I should be asking or not, but uh, you, you guys blowing through overtime budget right now? Oh, over, um, so overtime. Not, our overtime is doing okay, but our part time is going to be hurt. Okay. Well, the reason I'm asking is because if we're going to tap into more into your personnel funding for uh, employment funding versus buying the equipment to, uh, to make it lower for your person, I think we should be a no brainer. I, I, I don't think in the fiscal year right now, I don't think I've ever taken overtime in my career in well, five years. So right. like we try to offset as much of that. So our overtime isn't hurting too bad yet, but it could. What's actually yeah. happening is that uh, there isn't any coverage in That's the what I was not trying to say. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Yeah, that's what I was trying to not say. Not technically, no. Well, I mean, you can't call it that. Without having it doesn't. Yeah. And so does that well? Why does okay. this process arrive actually? Because before we could have someone worry about counting equipment, 
and if they had an incident go on, they didn't take everything. And this was that's how it came about. How and, they take everything. And this is the new law since January. It's just it's, it's part every, of it. So yeah, it's, it's everything it. that's been coming. You've seen what law enforcement is yeah. dealing with. It. It's like, just all of that. It's like okay. the comment based. If when you have turnover, you have to equip your your staff with what they need in order to do their job. It doesn't matter what they do and their position. That's what we're doing. We're equipping. We are equipping the staff with the with what they need to do to do their job. Whether you have somebody leave or you're adding to your department. So, as it pertains to his budget and getting it approved on April 5th, Jason's doing his diligence by telling the board that he needs to equip his staff with said equipment. He has the authorization to do so regardless of the cost at this point because it's operational and it needs to be done. But it's something that I want to explain why it's not in my budget. Yeah, we'll, we'll and not, it's He's gonna, worried that he's going to go over budget and it's going to affect his department poorly. In your <clears throat> I say we just offset it for next year's budget, but what are we doing to fall for that? Well, yeah. it's hard to say that to, to Jason. I mean, I, and the I reason agree. I'm saying that is because if he hires another full timer, I mean, if somebody turns over, he hires another full timer, then they leave. You got to hire another person. You're in the same boat. Mm -hmm. So and, it's and difficult. We, there's to something we have to address. We're, I was talking to Christina about it. We're going to make a line item specifically. We don't have equipment for part time officers. We don't even have that in my budget at all because we've. We've never had. We've to. never had to because of what we've been able to take advantage of mm -hmm. with existing officers using their equipment. It just can't happen. But with law enforcement going the way it is, you know, with what's been going on here the past two years, getting the point we've got to adjust. And our part timers want to work for us. Yeah, that's the other thing. If you that's look the other part is they they know right. they can't because of the the situations that have been put on them with their equipment. If you look through the line items, you can see how. I mean, absolute bare bones. I made it. And there's things I. We'll worry about things that would be good later. We need this is just to get on the street. This is absolute minimum of what we would need. And that's if any item that doesn't say four, that's them using their personal equipment. And which is fine. There, there's nothing wrong with us doing that. I'm just saying, like, that's how much they want to work for us in our community. So. And the other flip side to that, um, before we understand this one is department issued and this is specified to be that person like a vest or a pair of pants it, it is city owned so if you do have turnover then that becomes the next person's right. okay so it's not something that's a one and done and then they take it home with them that never happened no um personally or actually i can't even say personally as uh sitting on this board i don't think it's going to be an issue i mean because the pond they went what Sixty thousand under budget because of COVID last year, so I don't think you know, we'd have a problem with that. And yours is uh, an essential item, officer safety, which turns into citizen safety. I I don't see anyone on this board having an issue. And whatever was left of my budget always goes back to the general fund. And mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never been over budget since I've been here. So I mean, I've always stayed below that. This year I might be over it, but it's so something unforeseen mm -hmm. for me. And maybe I'll be under it, great. But I just. Seven grand is a lot to not think of ahead, or not know is coming ahead of me for a uh, department on my side. But, yeah. uh, to me personally, I say it's a reasonable expense. I agree with you. I agree. Do you have anything else? That's all. Did you guys see your firefighters? Thank them for the weekend. They yeah, worked over 26 rough. hours, helped in Tellier. The Mickey was called to fight that fire on, on Johnson's property this weekend. They were pretty wrecked. They had, they, they had to do shift work in order to fight it all night long on Saturday night and get that out. And the family lost their hay barn and shed, and that was it, to my knowledge. So that was a Shovler, North Home, Black Duck, Panema. No, Shovler didn't go because there was a Solway. fire out in Solway by Norboard and Bemidji. That was a six or seven. Oh, and DNR. It was either a six or seven department response, and um, yeah. Nice. Well, I think Paul was supposed to go to that. 
that they got called to another one. To another one. There was a lot of fires over that by uh, International Falls. So maybe that care of the fires. Of course, the wind didn't help this weekend. That's like the worst time in the world, but usually the time it happens. We got a little bit of weather. Nick, can you make a motion to adjourn? I'll motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I like that idea. I hope we're not losing any. Even though it's also, you know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.